Welcome to MSM ENV272. Participate in environmentally sustainable work practices. This lecture is a complement to your student workbook and other resources made available to you. To complete this unit, you will need some good software tools like Microsoft Office or Microsoft 365. If you don't have or can't afford Microsoft Office, LibreOffice is a good free option for your desktop publishing tasks. It's available for Windows, Apple and Linux. It offers the added advantage of enabling you to edit and create PDF files inside the suite. If you want to download LibreOffice, pause the video now. The download address is displayed on the slide. This unit's recommended reading is Sustainability, the next 21st century workplace skill. This document can be downloaded from PMoodle. Make sure you check PMoodle regularly for the latest uploads and resources. PMoodle is available on your favourite mobile device. All the PerTech documents referenced in this unit were downloaded from PConnect. They are also available from PMoodle. Make sure you take a moment to read through the PerTech environmental policy. All the PerTech parts and part specifications were downloaded from www.pertech.com.au. Think, plan, do, review. Think. What can I do today to make sure I contribute to a sustainable work environment? I do go through a lot of disposable coffee cups. Plan. I'm going to bring a cup from home. Do. I'm going to try using my own cup for a couple of days. Review. Is there less waste? Did I save money? Is it a false economy? Am I wasting water now that I'm washing the cup every day? Which is worse? Throwing a cup away every day or wasting water washing my cup? Might have to investigate that one a little bit further. Today we're going to have a look at our responsibilities and opportunities in maintaining an environmentally sustainable workplace. What does that actually mean? What it means is, how do we conduct our day-to-day -day business activities or work activities without causing damage to the environment and wasting resources? We know we're on the right track if we minimise damage to the environment, reduce resource wastage, maintaining a vibrant economy or workplace, and promoting an equitable society. What can we do? How can we participate in this activity? Establish a recycling program. Implementing a recycling program from the lunchroom to the shop floor. Let's separate all the cardboard, plastic bottles, rubber hoses, metal fittings, scrap metal. These could all be separated and sent off for recycling. Sometimes we can actually even sell the recycled material like uh, aluminium cans, uh, steel, and so forth. 
make sure everybody is engaged and educated in the responsibilities of waste disposal. What happens to the garbage once we put it in the bin? How can we make sure that the garbage is disposed of appropriately? Here we have a, a picture of a truck dumping garbage straight into the Amazon River. That millions of tons of garbage being illegally dumped or legally dumped in some cases has to go somewhere. Does it go into other rivers? Does it end up in the ocean? There are actually islands of plastic bottles and discarded fishing nets and plastic items floating in the ocean, which can be seen from out of space, they're so big. And keep in mind, that's just the rubbish that's on the surface. Keep in mind that most of the rubbish is beneath the surface. Make recycling easy. Set up some clear signage for the segregation of different types of materials at the waste station. Add some pictures. Glue a sample above each bin to describe what has to go in the bin. Make recycling easy. Consider engineering solutions to garbage and recycling. A very successful program is the cashback on plastic bottles. It's turned a environmental problem into an opportunity for people to make money and recycle the plastic. We've all heard of the mountains of tires, of used tires piling up around the world. Here's another example of a successful recycling initiative, uh, recycling tires for making uh, surfacing for playgrounds, uh, fill for roads, and the tires are processed and used for fuel in furnaces also. Another method is to conserve energy. Light bulb replacements, big business today. If we compare the incandescent light bulbs to the LED light bulbs, we can see that the LEDs use a tenth or consume a tenth of the power that incandescent light bulbs consume. This results to big savings, burning less coal to generate electricity. And of course, less pollution. Not all environmental pollution issues are accidental or through uh, lack of understanding or ignorance. The Phoebus cartel formed by the world's biggest light bulb manufacturers around 1925 got together and decided to engineer a shelf life for light bulbs, making sure that their factories would keep producing light bulbs. Each light bulb manufacturer would have to send samples off to an independent auditor and any light bulbs that lasted longer than the agreed period would uh, induce a fine, a hefty fine per thousand light bulbs of production. Engineering a service life of a product is called programmed obsolescence. The Phoebus cartel was disbanded around 1939, just at the beginning of the onset of uh, World War II. One legacy of the Phoebus cartel is the standardization of the mount on the light bulb. We're all familiar with the screw type mount on light bulbs. Programmed obsolescence can be engineered into the product or could be engineered in a financial since we're all familiar with uh, you know once the battery starts to uh, get a bit weak on our mobile devices it's cheaper to actually buy a whole new phone than to replace the battery so this is another form of programmed obsolescence conservation of energy 
power saving features like sleep modes on computer screens and other devices. Motion sensing on lighting. Timing on lighting. Inverter drive technology for refrigeration, air conditioning and so forth. With single phase induction motors, the only way to control the speed is by changing the frequency or changing the number of poles on the motor. By fitting an inverter drive on a induction motor, we can actually change the frequency, therefore changing the speed of the motor. Originally, a compressor motor in a air conditioner was either off or on. But with an inverter drive, we can have that motor chugging around very slowly, maintaining the temperature and not consuming too much power. We've all heard the term smart buildings. These are building management systems, usually computerized, that monitor temperature, movement of people, you know, location of people, and they can accordingly turn lights on and off, adjust the load on air conditioning, even program the speed of the opening and closing of doors in shopping centers to conserve uh, air conditioning energy. Let's not forget common sense. Turn the light off if there's no one in the room or if you're leaving an area. Promote an eco-friendly workplace. Do I really need to print that document? Can I print it on both sides? Can I put the paper back in the printer and print on the blank side? Will this damage the printer? Will this result in more expense or more wasted energy? Cloud and tablet or mobile devices are quickly replacing paper-based tasks out in the workplace. Green, your supply chain. Are your suppliers on the same page as you are in relation to sustainability and the environment? Is a green supplier part of your quality management system? If green purchasing is embedded in your purchasing policy, it won't be affected by staff changes. Here we have an example of Pertex purchasing policy, appointing a new green supplier as per its green supply chain criteria. There are a lot of advantages for greening your supply chain. First one, brand association, presence in the marketplace. There's a positive effect on the environment. It reduces costs and waste, gives you a competitive edge and preference in the marketplace for contracts. And it's compliance with government regulations. Reduce by reusing. Some PPE are convenient in the short term, but can cause problems in the long term. Disposable hearing protection like earplugs can cause damage to the environment during disposal and are unhygienic. Personal hearing protection devices like earmuffs are a better and cheaper alternative in the long run. Reduce by reusing. Bring a coffee cup from home and hand it to the barista when ordering a coffee. Think about all those cups, lids and stirrers that eventually get disposed of. The plastic lids and stirrers alone take hundreds of years to decompose. Ergonomics and the workplace. Here we have a photo of the Ferrari assembly line. Looks more like a hotel lobby. Ergonomics and the workplace. Natural lighting, ventilation, aesthetics. Improve the working environment and willingness to participate in sustainable activities. When something becomes normal, it's hard to see the problem. The people living along this river of rubbish 
would be more concerned about where their next meal's coming from. The environment would be low on their list of priorities. They could probably do little about it anyway due to political and socio-economic circumstances. The problem needs to be addressed at the manufacturing level with recyclables and renewable materials. Training and knowledge. Whether you are living alongside a river of rubbish or working in a Ferrari factory, the idea of environmental sustainability must be a win-win situation for everybody involved. Out of sight, out of mind. Here we see a garbage truck dumping a load of household waste straight into the Amazon River. This is happening all over the world on a daily basis, even in Australia, albeit illegal. Who's accountable? Is it sanctioned or is it legal? Why is it happening? Why is no one doing anything about it? How much of the contents of the load could have been recycled or reused? It eventually ends up somewhere and someone else's problem. And usually where no one can do anything about it. Reducing the carbon footprint. What is a carbon footprint? Whenever we consume something, there's a certain amount of energy associated with that consumption as energy had to be used to create it. That energy gives off waste gas, which pollutes the atmosphere. That pollutant is referred to as a greenhouse gas. When I turn a light on, the electricity was generated by burning coal or gas. When the coal or gas is burnt, it produces CO2, carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. This amount of gas is measurable and is called a carbon footprint. I just Googled a carbon footprint of a schooner of VB and it says the carbon footprint is 300 grams of CO2. Governments provide great incentives for organisations and businesses that reduce their carbon footprint. Why are greenhouse gases, CO2 for example, bad for the environment? Greenhouse gases are causing the Earth's surface to increase in temperature at an abnormal rate. Why do greenhouse gases heat up the Earth? Greenhouse gases always existed in the atmosphere. Yes, but humans are pumping excess amounts into the atmosphere, creating energy and burning things. Every time a light particle hits the earth, it gives off a little bit of heat and bounces back off into space. As the light is heading back out into space, if it collides with a greenhouse gas molecule, it bounces back to the earth, again, giving off It's like when you go camping and you start a fire using a mirror or a magnifying glass. As we've already discussed, when we burn something, CO2 or carbon dioxide is produced. Another greenhouse gas is methane. This is usually a byproduct of decomposing garbage and it's produced by mammals during the digestion of food. In relation to digestion, the exponential increase in the world's cow population has significantly increased the world's methane level in the atmosphere. The easiest way to reduce our carbon footprint is to reduce our energy consumption. Set up a carpool, ride or walk to work, work from home remotely. Drive straight to jobs. Do video conferencing instead of having face-to-face -face meetings. 
reducing carbon footprint, using correct manufacturing techniques, reduce your carbon footprint by reducing consumption of raw materials and reducing scrap. We're all familiar with the silver soldering process and we know that we need to have the correct flame, the correct gas pressures, we need to prepare the job properly and we need to apply the correct technique. This saves time, money and reduces wastage. Environmental law and practice in Australia. There is federal and state legislation that we need to be aware of. There are heavy penalties, fines and possible jail time for breaches of environmental regulations. If you are not sure about your rights and obligations relating to environmental issues, contact your state or federal authority. In New South Wales, it's the EPA. Let's look at a case study. I'm gonna be storing large quantities of hydraulic oil in my workshop. I'm introducing a substance or chemical into my workplace. Therefore, I need to have a safety data sheet for that material or substance available in the workshop. I'm introducing a new substance or process into my workshop. Therefore, I'm going to need a risk assessment. The SDS or safety data sheet contains vital information on the substance, hazards and handling procedures. If the SDS does not have the information that you require, contact the supplier. In this example, section 12, ecological information, describes the toxicity, biodegradability, etc. Here we have section 12, disposal considerations. Again, I'm going to need a licensed waste disposal contractor to remove the used or spilled hydraulic oil from my premises. According to the EPA website, there are serious penalties for disposing of this hydraulic oil down the drain or letting it escape into the environment, waterways, land, etc. Looks like this hydraulic oil should not be allowed to contaminate land. Protec has a clean up spills work instruction. This is a series of instructions to deal with spills. A copy of this work instructions available from PConnect and PMoodle. The work instruction describes that I need to have a general purpose spill kit handy for this particular hydraulic oil. According to the work instruction, my spill kit should have socks, pillows, pads, and a floor sweeper. Yeah, the global spill kit, this looks like the one. If the spill is not contained and it contaminates the environment or a waterway, I am legally required to report the incident to the EPA. This is also specified in the Pertec spill work instruction. Report the spill to the DEHP or the EPA, depending on your particular state. 